What we do is we go ahead and have a 75 meter reach. Yeah. What Gail's doing right now is she's getting things set up to take the water temperature cover. And that's another thing that we do within um, when we're doing our assessment. We look around the stream to see how much tree cover there is. And here at Dark Branch, we have plenty of tree cover to shade. The net down uh, into the bottom of the stream and I'm going to reach in and I'm going to pick up the rocks right nearby and I'm going to rub them because there may be aquatic macroinvertebrates that are clinging on there. And we do it for a certain period of time and we let it all flow into the net. Did you find something? Yeah. What's that? The caddis fly. Oh. This shows a caddis fly in its catch net. Silt. Out of the sample. Got stuff on the side already. It makes it all. On the outside of the net. Some of these places that we have to get the D net are a little tricky. We have to finesse it in there and get it to a position where we can get the most water flowing through it so that the, any bugs that we release go right into the net as opposed to under the net or next to the net. So here, About a I think that's good. Yep. Good, not too many leaves. If you like nice fancy fingernails, this is not for you. <laughs> <laughs> is that one? Yeah, that. Is that a dish place? Mm -hmm. What's so neat is just by looking into the um, bucket, you can actually start differentiating the different bugs just by their behavior. This one looks like a pearly, but I'm going to look at it under the microscope because it may be a family that looks very similar to, to pearlidae. But also you can be on a team and not know how to identify all of them because you're with, when you start out, you're with other people who've taken all the classes and know how to do it. And you can still be helpful because one of the things you do in addition to holding the net scrubbing the rocks is one of the first things you do is just have to be able to identify motion in the pan. You don't need to identify them then. You can help scoop them up and put them in the containers and then we've got various guidebooks that we use. So you can come out and be part of a team without knowing as much as, as the other team. This is an exciting stream because every single thing you pick up, as in this rock, there's, there's creatures Crawling, oh. clinging, hiding. Now, the, the Hydrocycidae build little nets, catch nets, mm -hmm. uh, may have leaves in part, and okay. they live in that retreat. I see. And uh, they, they spin silk. In fact, the, the one uh, attached to the dish as I was uh, trying to identify it, and um, so they're very quick at spinning silk. Damselflies and dragonflies don't have a pupil stage, and so they go from egg to nymph to adult. Now I did. Oh, that oh, is our favorite. Remember, ladies, animals. in our first oh, yes. collection. And we actually saw um, a couple different kinds. Um, this he was yeah. the one that said it, and then That's right. right away we saw one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Kathy, what, where was that? Mayflies, they're also a nice variety of those I mean, that we found too. Day, because, so uh, it's, uh, now that this is all complete, we'll go ahead and send this to Kathy. Amazing. And after we send it to her, she'll go ahead and incorporate all the data with all the other collections that she's done from all the other reaches. When you look at your whole sample uh, and you compute each of the um, macroinvertebrates that you find, you can tally up uh, and to compute the um, sensitivity rating for the stream and uh, the health of the stream. The yeah. You don't know how many times.